Hi, I'm Art, BenQ Ambassador. Welcome to my CIC, Command Information Center. I would like to talk about BenQ Lada's Palette Master Element Release version 1.3.9, which at this point should be available on BenQ download site and also through the update check on your currently installed Palette Master Element. I will go over the changes, improvement, bug fix, the best recommended setting that you should use for this version of Palette Master Element for both Mac and PC, and if you're running Palette Master Element on a Macintosh system, there are certain settings to avoid and I will share that with you as well. Let's get started. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. For this video, I will go over my recommended calibration setting. However, if you would like to see a full calibration walkthrough, make sure that you subscribe and hit on the bell because I do plan to release a version for Mac and PC of that guide later on. Starting at the top of the list, this version added support officially for two new X-Rite devices. The first one is the X-Rite new colorimeter, the i1 Display Pro Plus, which is a unit that I have here. It is a really great device to calibrate the display, and it also adds support for X-Rite Pro Color Spectrophotometer, that is the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus. So both of those devices are now officially support in the current version of Palette Master Element. Moving on to the Macintosh system. On the Mac system, we now have a new installer that makes it much easier to install Palette Master Element. Simply when you download it, you will have a DMG file that you would have to mount. Click on the Agree. And from there, what you would do is simply drag Palette Master Element into your application folder on your Macintosh system. It is that simple. For both Mac and PC, the measurement screen now blacks out the entire display and you will no longer see the desktop like pass version. In my many tests, I found this version to calibrate the display much better than any of the other previous one. This is confirmed through the profile validation where it not only passed, but the Delta E values are much lower than any of the I've seen before. This is especially true for the newer SW display that have the updated 16-bit 3D LUT such as the SW270C and the SW321C that I have here. I have been told the bug that renders red slightly orange have been fixed in this version. However, in my testing, this may require a slight change to your color workflow, which I will release a video about. Now to the best calibration setting, let's first focus on the PC. I've gone out and purchased a PC laptop, so now I have a dedicated Windows 10 to do all these testing. For Palette Master Element, you can keep the same recommendation as version 138, and that is to use the RGB primary, set it to panel native, and the profile type, use 16-bit LUT. So on this screen, RGB primary, choose panel native. The luminance anywhere between 80 to 120 candela will be a great value for any creative workflow. I will leave it at 120 for this one. Black point, I choose relative because I found out that that scaled much better and also give me better black details. In the next screen, make sure that you choose profile version 2 if you're running on a window system. And under profile type, choose 16-bit LUT. For patch set size, I would go with large. And that's pretty much what you need to do on Windows 10 and PC side of Palette Master Element 139. Now moving on to the Macintosh system, I am going to revise my recommendation in a few areas, so make sure you take notes on this. Starting out with the RGB primary, if you want the largest color gamut for the display, I would still choose panel native. However, if you want to choose any of the other RGB primary, that will work too. Luminance, set it so that the value is anywhere between 80 to 120 candela. Any of those values would be great for any type of creative work. Black point, set it to relative. This way you get better black scaling and also better details in the blacks. In the next screen, leave the profile version at 4. Under profile type, make sure to choose matrix in this one. My previous recommendation in version 1.3.8 is to choose 16-bit LUT profile type because that is a better profile type. However, in this version, there is a known bug that in some rare instances, if you choose a 16 or an 8-bit LUT, any LUT for that matter, what happens is that your system will abruptly lock you out. So to avoid that from happening and you possibly losing on any unsafe work, what I would do is choose matrix. Pat set size, large, 
And from here, you can start the calibration process. One more thing regarding RGB primary. In previous versions, selecting any RGB primary other than panel native will cause color shift in Lightroom when you're using graphic acceleration. With this version, BenQ have gone out and fixed that issue. So if you choose any RGB primary other than panel native, there is no color shift in Lightroom and I have actually tested this myself. Overall, I find this is a good update. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below. Like if you find this helpful, subscribe if you are new, hit on the bell to be notified when I upload those full guide walkthrough on how to calibrate your SW display. And until next time, art is right.